welcome back, Susan. It's great to see you. Thank you. It's great to see you too. As we were just saying, it's it's hard to believe. It's almost like halfway through 2021. 2020 is back there somewhere. And um, I think the future looks bright, but it's still quite amazing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 2020, oh man, what a year. Um, hopefully we won't see anything like that year again anytime soon. Amen to that, as they say. Um, well, I'm, I'm really glad you're back and um, um, revisiting with us because I was really taken by the uh, initiative that you, you're on with, it, which is about board diversity disclosure benchmarking. Cool. <laughs> cool. Got it. I forgot. Cool. I initially said thing, but that was the wrong thing to say. But uh, it's, it's great. And I'm, you know, I was mentioning to you, as we do a lot of work in diversity, equity, inclusion, anti racism. And we know stats, but it still hit me some of the stats that are there. And, and, and um, I don't want you to talk about it, but I just want to name a few that I said. First of all, so little report race, ethnicity, or sexual orientation, which mm -hmm. are the hot topics going on like crazy. Um, and, you know, um, I noticed that they don't include that in their description of how diversity is incorporated in their, in their search criteria. Considering we do search, you know, we, we, every search we do, the, there's an, a, a focused intent on diversity in every search we do. So I don't understand how you cannot have direct research criteria. It, it kind, of, kind of blows me away. And there's so many other great st statistics. One I'll mention only is um, only two thirds specify gender diversity, only 61% specify racial or ethnic diversity. You'd almost think, they're, you're, they're going to be thought of in a good way if they do report it. So if they don't report it, are they not doing it? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, that's, that's a good guess. Yeah, exactly. So can you start a little bit by, give us a little bit of the background of how this evolved and, and what's happening with it? Because it's really cool. Sure, sure. Um, so, so first of all, uh, what's happening with it is really, it's very, very new. It's just been rolled out about a month ago. So, you know, we're still in that phase of people saying, oh, this is really cool. Can I find out more about it? Which, which, which is fantastic. It's it is. Gotten, um, you know, I mean, I, I you know, just as, as one data point, I've gotten more LinkedIn likes and, you know, kind of uh, people reading it for, for a post about this than, than pretty much anything else. So there's definitely a lot of interest in it. That's great. And it, you know, it, it goes back to what we've said uh, and we've talked about, you know, kind of over and over again about the importance of diversity. And from a board perspective, everyone wants to know. So who's on your board? How do you think about it? Um, and it, it's been this you know, kind of hidden thing. Companies have to disclose, uh, under the SEC rules, public companies have to disclose how they include diversity in their search. And what had tended to happen was you get a lot of companies saying, we include diversity in our search. That's really important to us. So, so that's the first thing we wanted to know is, you know, okay, what are companies really saying? And, and how are we going to start tracking it so that we're hoping that what's gonna happen is that some of the sparse numbers that we're seeing in that tool now are going to increase dramatically over the years. Um, so, you know, again, going back, why, why do we care about this? We care about it because it is beyond time for companies to say, we've got all of this talent out there. We don't just have to go to, you know, our golf buddies or, you know, the people that we worked with, uh, you know, our entire lives. We can bring new and different people into the board and investors want to know, okay, so are you really doing that? How are you doing that? Um, and others want to know it too. That's the interesting thing we found out is that um, employees are now asking who's on your board. And so what was happening was there was a lot of information that came out uh, from, you know, from our people as well as from others saying, well, you know, boards have X percent of women, X percent of black board members, Latino board members, LGBT board members, Asian board members. And the question was always, how do you know that? 
And, and a lot of times it was simply a guess. Uh, you know, gender is obviously a lot easier because in the, the uh, bios, they'll usually use pronouns. Um, although as, as we move toward a, you know, sort of more gender fluid world, that's gonna become harder and harder too. But at least for now, for most board members, it's very easy to tell. Um, can you tell race, ethnicity from a last name, from a picture? Maybe. Sometimes, but sometimes you'd come to a wrong conclusion. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's a lot of great work going on by the organizations that represent these constituents. Um, and so that's how a lot of the work is being done now, but it's still not enough. Disclosure is really important. And so what this tool looks at exclusively is disclosure. And so we've kind of, uh, we worked with a company that, that I have to give a tremendous amount of credit to, S-Gage. Uh, they, they, they are data fanatics. They, they, you know, they put this whole thing together. Um, we went back and forth on how to do it, what to measure, and, and they're a tremendous partner in this. And, you know, so we said, okay, you know, first of all, uh, you know, to your point about the, uh, the diversity, um, you know, kind of uh, the um, uh, initially, how are you thinking about it at your board? When you think about diversity, what does that mean to you? Are you thinking about recruiting for race, ethnicity, for, you know, variances in sexual orientation, knowing that all of that brings a different perspective? And if you are, why aren't you disclosing, disclosing right. what your policy is? Um, you know, so that's where we started. And then we said, okay, well, let's look for those companies that do disclose. Are they disclosing it at the full board level? Are they disclosing it at the individual director level? And we found that, you know, a couple of things. First of all, not surprisingly, the larger the company, uh, and the, the higher the amount of diversity there was, the more disclosure we saw, um, you know, which, which you would expect. Yeah. Um, but, but what that says is if you're a company in the, you know, maybe $100 million range, boy, is there a long way to go for companies in that revenue range to disclose because the difference between that you know, level of disclosure and the level of disclosure uh, in uh, you know, like the Fortune 500 is enormous. So, so this really, really points that out. Um, and you can also look at it by industry. Uh, and you know, so, so we look at the question of, are companies making these disclosures? And this is just a, a yes, no, you can look and see. And then also to the extent companies are making disclosures, what do those statistics look like? Uh, and, and, and we all know uh, that, that they're very, very small. So, you know, just for example, um, among the, uh, the Fortune, or I guess it's the S&P 500, um, you know, uh, black directors, uh, among those that disclose, it's 1.9%. Uh, Latinos are less than 1%. Asians are less than 1%, LGBT almost zero. Now, we know that the numbers are small. So for example, uh, I believe the number for Latinos in uh, boardrooms of that size is about 3%. So it is small, but still it's more than 1%. So there definitely are companies out there that should get credit for what they're doing, but they're not because they're not making those disclosures. So, so they could, stop there. Yeah. Okay. No, that's it's awesome. So this this shows them that this is a benefit to them. You can differentiate yourself. But this should be a no-brainer type of thing. So maybe there's some that don't know yet, but but um, sooner or later they'll they'll know. But um, and that leaves the ones that don't have it to not be or to be differentiated also, but in a negative way um, right. because they don't. And that's just and that's just the showing part. The more important part, right, is. How do we get people to realize this is great for business? <laughs> um, not to mention like like talent, you know, when we recruit talent, I have candidates, we do board searches or even searches for their regular positions that will ask to your point, um, who is on the board? 
You know, are they diverse? Especially if it's a woman or a minority, are they diverse? For obvious reasons, they will ask that. Um, mm -hmm. And so on and so forth. And uh, so it shocked me that especially the most obvious things of gender, race, ethnicity, you know, weren't, weren't being disclosed as much. I kind of got the sense maybe other stuff wouldn't be, which I think is almost as important, like you say, different industry diversification on, on the board. You don't need everybody in the same industry on the same board. That does well, no, just to be clear on the industry, um, it's not industry diversification on the board. It's that you can see race, gender, ethnicity, and LGBT diversity cut by industry. Yeah, no, so, I understand. Yeah. I, I was just yeah. saying that's even another oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. diversity thing where you yeah. get people from different industries on it, where it used to be years ago, the retailer had everybody from retail right. on the right. board, which right. was, as a young kid, when I first started at Deloitte, was like, this makes no sense at all. I didn't even know what I was talking about. <laughs> um, so I- You had wisdom beyond your years at the time. No, yeah, but, but, but it is true. It, it does make no sense at all. Um, you know, the, the, the best way that I have heard it described by someone was, you know, if, if you have 10 people on the board and they all have the same background and all have the same ideas, you don't need nine of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. It saves some money too. Um, right. <laughs> so um, do you find, it's funny you mentioned as, as things go on, it's going to be harder to, to know who's who. And it, it, uh, I hate to put this in you now, but I remember a Seinfeld show where Jerry was set up on a date with this Julie Chang or something, and he keeps waiting for the Asian girl to show up. But it happens to be a Jewish girl who was adopted by an Asian family. And he was so disappointed because he was hoping it was an Asian girl. But uh, so diversity, that, you're right, we may not know. <laughs> well, ex exactly, exactly. And that's, and that's why the disclosure is so important. And again, you know, there's questions about, well, you know, can you really ask someone and isn't that rude and intrusive? It's all voluntary. No one has to disclose, um, uh, you know, but um, again, it's, it's just, it really makes a difference and it, and it really helps. Um, and, and we know there's a long way to go. And we've seen, you know, like for example, uh, NASDAQ has a rule pending before the SEC that if you uh, want to be listed on the NASDAQ exchange, you have to just, you know, if, if you have to, it's kind of a comply or explain. So you have to have, you know, diversity or what, explain why not. And, you know, so, so it, presuming that that is um, adopted in some way, shape, or form, disclosure is, is going to become mandatory in some instances and, and just, you know, more kind of the, the default and more expected in other instances. And, and, and we're, you know, again, going back to the tool, that's, that's why we started it now, because it feels like this is a time where things are poised to change, and we're hoping to be able to track that over time. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I remember actually representing a, a lady that was got an in, got um, an offer to join a really important board, and um, she got the offer the day after California mandated that certain companies had to have women on boards, and she had mm -hmm. to make a difficult decision on do I take it and they think I got it because of that, or do I take it despite that to make a difference? And I don't know which. There's no right decision. It depends. But she decided to decline especially because it was so close to when that happened. Um, yeah. So that, that becomes difficult, but you know, it should be, I know this is too common sense should be common practice type of comment, but um, we should get to the point where um, this is a good thing to do. <laughs> um, you know, you get different perspectives from men and women, you get different perspectives from the cultures you grew up in. If you're a consumer based, you know, B2C company, huge, for that type of company, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 there were, um, so I work very closely with the Latino Corporate Directors Association and, and, and they, um, you know, we don't name companies because that's that's not what we do, but but they they looked in their database and they found a couple of companies where their entire consumer base, you know, not only their consumer base, but their product was 
you know, kind of Mexican, whatever. Um, and, um, and they met with them and said, well, that's interesting. You don't have any Latinos on your board. <laughs> and, and, and as a result of that conversation though, you know, they opened some eyes and they said, oh yeah, you know, we, we were just sort of never really thought about it, but that does make sense. And, you know, when LCDA said, and, and here's, you know, 15 amazingly qualified people you might want to consider, all of a sudden the network changed and they brought some people onto their board that they wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Yeah, sometimes, you know, what they say, yeah, <clears throat> the, the, the obvious thing is right in front of your nose and you don't, uh, you don't recognize it. Um, I guess the, you know, the, one of the last things I would, I would say is I, I found that talking to a managing directors of like Y Combinator and whatnot startups, um, mm -hmm have said, and I've, I've always said this too, is you're, you're creating your culture from point zero in, when you start. Whether, whether you think it or not, you're creating it and most startup people will say, well, I'm so busy, or at least so with the funding and the business and all this stuff. But, but if you start then creating your culture, then you're gonna have a foundation that's gonna be tremendous for your, for your company. So it's not just big public companies, I think it applies to just smart business, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you completely. And um, I'll, I'll do this quickly because I know we don't have a lot of time left, but um, there was someone uh, that I had spoken to who you know, was in that position as a founder of a company, typical founder board where it was him and uh, two you know, representatives, the investors, both of whom were white men. Um, and there was someone that he wanted to bring on to the board as the first outside investor that uh, and first outside director who was someone he had known for a long time. And, and it was a woman and she said, I'm happy to join your board, but I'm not going to be the first woman. So <laughs> he, he went and, and he you know, recruited another exceptional woman. Um, and, and this one happened to be a woman of color. And, and he, he is the biggest convert to diversity I have ever spoken to because he said it just opened his eyes to not only the conversation and how it differed from the perspectives, but there were business models that he had been missing out on because he just, you know, he and the, the two investors were thinking in a similar way. And there was all this stuff out there that they weren't thinking about. And, and so, you know, he says he, he really felt the difference and how valuable it was. Um, and I just, I've always loved that story. Usually the converts are no more about whatever than the, the people that have been in it the, the whole time. And I guess I'll complete on, on, on saying that um, executives in business know that flip-flopping is a good idea when you get more info. Politicians will criticize the other side for flip-flopping all the time, and they should be flip-flopping if, if we have more information. So it's a good thing to do. Um, hey, I'd love to talk more about it and, and see how we might even be able to work together um, with what you're doing, but congrats. It's a, it's makes so a lot of sense. I think it's gonna make a big difference. So way to be a leader who cares and making it happen. Thank you. And it's great to talk to you and I'd love to continue the conversation. Sounds great. Thanks, Susan. Take care.